thanks so much for joining me for this Get Ready With Me featuring these two new limited edition blushes by Chanel. So we're going to try something a little bit different today because I've been testing this out, the number one to Chanel. I tried it with a primer. I recently tried it without any skincare underneath. I know it says to go in with skincare first and follow immediately with this. However, my skin is combo, can get oily in the center here. So I thought, let me try this without any skincare. So I just washed my face. I actually tried this before, so I wanted to do this on camera in case you were interested in this and you have more oily skin. Right now, without moisturizer, it's still shiny. So that's just my skin. But it actually worked quite well. I tried this out when I did the vlog with my mom. That's going up maybe tomorrow. Um, and it worked so much better. So that gave me kind of an idea of how this works on dry skin. Okay, I'm gonna go in with concealer. I'm gonna go in with Honey by Clay de Poe. I just ordered the new concealer by Clay de Poe in Mocha because I have a fresh one of Honey. I didn't wanna buy yet another one. Um, so I will be testing that out for you. The new formula has a brightening element in it that will help with discoloration. So I'm excited for that. The SPF also has increased to 27, I believe. It's higher now, so I like that as well. Sizzly under the eye. Chantecaille base on the eyelids. I had a question about this product, how it will work on oily eyelids. I don't have oily eyelids, they're pretty normal. Um, I don't really have a dry kind of eyelid area either. So I don't know how well this works on more oily eyelids. However, if there is someone out there who has oily eyelids and uses this, please let us know how it works for you. La Prairie, someone asked me about La Prairie as well. They said, this concealer, they asked if they really needed it and I don't think you really need it. <laughs> I've said this before, but I have to look at the video playback and I notice a difference when I'm looking at the video. So I'll show you right here the difference side by side really quick. I just pat that in. You'll see the difference. It's subtle, but it's there. It just really what matters to you, I think, if you care at all about this area or not. So for me, I can tell the difference in the playback. That's probably why I do this more for videos than anything else, but it depends on your degree of how bright you want the under eye area or if you have more uh, darkness under there. But yeah, if I was just gonna do one, I would do the Sizzly. I think that's just fine. But it is a subtle brightness that you get from adding that right under there. Going in with the Rodeo Loose Powder, and this goes in stock, and then it's out of stock, and then it's in stock, so I will try and find it for you. But I'm just gonna take this big Lumiere brush, and I'm going to dust this on. Okay, I'm gonna hold on the Chantecaille Perfect Blur Powder for a moment here because I wanna go in with that blush after I use it as a blush or try to use it as a blush as more of a finishing powder. Okay, eyebrows, Gucci pencil. I'm going to go in with the 747 palette. I have been using this quite a bit, as you can see. I like it. I think I like it more than I thought I would. It's a really pretty daily kind of palette, but I'm going to use a little bit of rose water here and apply it with some water. So I'm going to take this shade right here. It's got a really beautiful finish on it. Take a bit of this deepest shade. It's like a greenish bronze. So you can build this one up really nicely, but I'm gonna take this shade from the 719, the Organza palette by Dior, and we're just gonna go in the crease. Just gonna go under with this shade as well. 
Okay, I'm going to add mascara, tight line. We'll be right back. I tight lined with Chantecaille's Earth. Waterline is Victoria Beckham Beauty in bronze. And then on the top, we have a little kitten wing with Chanel's um, Khaki Mattel. Oh yeah, and then Chantecaille Faux Seal Long is Slash Mascara or Mascara. And if you miss the unboxing, there's a brush that goes with this. It came in its own little pouch and everything. So let's just try this. I don't think we're even going to see this on my skin. We're going to go in with this one first. It's the uh, very light peach shade. Looks like this and it almost looks like a finishing powder or a powder. So let's try. Okay, <laughs> I see like the slightest amount. Okay, so there it is. Actually, it has more of a glow on the cheek. Than, oh, I can actually see it. Um, <laughs> I didn't think I'd be able to see it. It has more of a glow on the cheek than I thought it would. Huh. Okay, so it's like a very light dusting. It would be a super, super subtle highlighter if you wanted to use it as a highlighter, but that's... <laughs> That is this shade right here. Um, but we're gonna go in with this shade, this uh, coral shade on this side. And I think I wanna take my Clay de Peau brush um, for this. Ooh, that's quite intense. Um, Cause I really like this brush for both uh, creams and powders. So let's see. Okay, so there's quick color payoff there. So just be really gentle with this going on really beautiful and yeah, that's pretty Let's see what it looks like a little bit further up how this will go with something like my Wayne Goss brush because this is a nice like a lightweight kind of brush so it'll be a little bit more buffed on application I like this better even though I love my clay to Poe brush I like this artist brush better because it's a lot easier to buff it in Beautiful. Ooh, I added quite a bit, didn't I? Okay, so let's see what this looks like on top of this blush or highlighter powder <laughs> on top of the peach one. Let's see what kind of a glow we get applying it on top. Yeah, I definitely prefer this type of brush. So you could do that if you have both. You could use that um, peach one as like an underneath kind of glow to soften the blush because you're, you'll see a difference here in a moment. Oh, if you didn't see the close-ups of these blushes, um, I do have a dedicated video to close-ups swatches and I did see one come in a request for a swatch comparison for a blush I do have, so I will do that for you. I actually really like this finish with this underneath, so I didn't expect that. So yeah, really pretty to put this down first and then this because you get this kind of a glow to it, which I think is really beautiful. It's uh, more ethereal, I think here. And here is a beautiful color, but it's much more of a flush to it. So you have a different effect here. And I really prefer this side, I think. Yeah, as pretty as this is, but let's see if we reverse it, if we get the same impact. I don't think we will because having that underneath really helped. So I don't think Applying this on top is going to do the same trick, but we'll try. Yeah, I really like it with this underneath. Huh. Do prefer this side versus just this blush by itself. I mean, this is really pretty, but I just think it's elevated with this underneath. So if you got this and you're not sure what to do with it, try it underneath this blush if you have both of them, because now I wonder how this would look under other blushes in general. That might be really pretty. I've got the excess off. I'm gonna take this all over my face. So we're gonna use it kind of like a dusting powder, kind of like a Guerlain Meteorites, that kind of idea. So let's see. So at first I thought maybe this would be like an hourglass powder, but it's got a bit more glow to it. Yeah, that might be the best way to use this is like an overall glow or under blush. Yeah, I think it's pretty. So you can just see it on the face and it just glows. So I think if you have dry skin, you might actually really like that too for uh, kind of that added glow because my skin feels quite set 
because I didn't add moisturizer before that foundation. So it's as close to dry skin as I'm going to get to test that foundation on dry skin. I wanted to wait on bronzer for a moment here. I'm gonna take the Sisley bronzer here. Okay, and then we need a lip. Um, and I have two lip shades from this collection. I think I threw them in with the spring summer collection, but I do have two lip shades. So I have here a number one, one eight, and I have one three eight. We could go in with one one eight and see how that looks, the lighter of the two. So I think that's really pretty if you want something like more daytime. I think that's a really pretty one. It's got the same kind of warmth to it that goes really well with the cheek. This is 118. Let's go in now with 138. I always like a brighter lip because I feel like it really enhances the complexion. So thank you to Margaret who let me know that this was very light. She in fact had packed these both for me, got them ready to ship, and then swatched it because it had just come in. And she sent me a picture and she asked me, are you sure you want this? Because I can barely see it on my skin and she's lighter in skin tone than me. So I knew it was going to be really hard to see on me. But I said, no, I want to try it. I know a lot of people have already purchased it. So I did want to share with you what it looks like and maybe how you could use it if you already have it. Let us know if this does work as a blush on you and maybe what shade you are so we can kind of get an idea of what shade range this works for as a blush. But I have to say, even though it didn't work as a blush on me, it also didn't work as a powder. I thought maybe it would be a nice finishing powder that would do some blurring, but it's not like the Hourglass ambient lighting powders either. It doesn't have that. It has very much a similar finish to a Guerlain Meteorites though. So it's not a highlighter, it's not a finishing powder. Although some people will go in with Guerlain Meteorites to finish, but for me a finishing powder is more like uh, Chantecaille's Blur Powder, something like that that's perfecting. This is more of like a glow powder, so if you want something ethereal, I think that's really beautiful. Although I have to say, I really did like it most under this blush. I think it improved the performance of this blush. I really liked how this went on, but I had to be really careful. Um, it may have been the brush as well because when I switched over to this brush, the Wayne Goss Artist brush, it went on much better. And then on top of this, it was even better. So it had a more airbrushed quality to it. A beautiful glow to the cheek underneath. So, I know I say this, but I love layering blushes, so that's why I like these both together. I think this one actually made this one better, but if I was going to buy one, I would just buy this. But I am going to try this with other blushes underneath a blush, uh, like a little bit of a glow. Again, not the same level as a highlighter, but still providing a beautiful glow. It was pretty all over the face. I would just avoid the uh, front here, though just to make sure I don't emphasize any pores because I didn't finish with that blur powder and that's what the magic of that Chantkai blur powder is, is that it blurs these pores. I think you can see them right now. That's what my pores really look like. I think that's how I'd use it more like a meteorites where I don't actually apply it to this part of my face. I usually avoid that part of my face. Thank you also for watching the swatching video. If you have not seen it, I swatch the blushes, you get close-ups, I do some comparisons, and then I asked if there were any other comparisons that you would like to see. I don't have one of the blushes someone mentioned, but I do have Chantecaille's Manta Ray, so I will go ahead and show that to you now. As requested, here are some swatches. The top one is this blush, Manta Ray by Chantecaille. So you can see it's much more vibrant than any of the other blushes. The next one here is this Chanel blush, the new one, the coral one. So it's a little bit more muted, a little bit more pink. Then we have Peche Rosé, which is definitely a peachier, more orangey tone. And on the bottom here we have Bron Roussi, which is definitely more brownish than anything else. But let me know what you think of these blushes and also what you think of the application of the foundation. It was so much better on non-moisturized skin. I had just cleaned it and toned and that was it. Um, but it does work so much better like that in case you wanted to try it in case you're just a little bit more um, oily versus dry and you still wanted to try it. It worked really nicely. But as for these blushes, 
of course glad I tried them. I've purchased so much in the month of January more than I typically do but there were so many beautiful items coming out. I will be doing a roundup where I talk about all of the items I purchased because I've got to get a handle on everything myself and then I will revisit maybe in a couple more weeks and give you a ranking of everything. Kind of oh, almost dropped it. <laughs> kind of where everything falls and maybe priorities about what to pick up especially if they are limited edition items. But that is it for today's video, so please take care of each other. Stay well if you enjoyed this video. If you learned something, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and I will see you next time.